I'm Kathleen and welcome to my sewing practice. This is the YouTube channel where I get to talk about how I created a concise and cohesive closet. Welcome again. This is Friday, so it's time for Friday Sews and I would like to talk about a project that I have completed recently that involved three patterns, two girls, and four pieces. So let's get started. To start with, um, as you can maybe see, I have embraced the statement sleeve, and I thought I would start by having the bishop sleeve. At the same time, there's a little pattern company called Little Lizard King, and they released a totally free pattern called the Galena dress. It so happens that they have it in girls and women's. Now, since then, they have changed the women's sizes to a like a spin-off little um, business, I guess you'd call it, called Styla. They're totally worth looking at drawings of the Galena. Okay, so as you can see, it has a couple different looks. You can do the placket down the front, short sleeves, or that lovely bishop sleeve. So I made it for my granddaughter and she loved it. As a matter of fact, she's a really picky sewer and she loved it. So it's gotten to be one of those things I've made quite a few times because of the, if it's not broke, let's not fix it kind of thing. As a matter of fact, she asked if I would make her one out of this kind of minky fabric. And so that was a beautiful dress I made her that she wore around Christmas time. And um, I also made her the top that you're gonna see. I had seen some little girls that had a little extra cap. So I added that to hers. I used a power mesh that I happen to have, and um, so that's really what the cap is made out of, but it, it coordinates pretty well, and it's just like, she loves that little detail of it. So now we have these beautiful statement sleeves. Um, I too wanted one, so I made one. And my favorite pattern for a knit top is the Deer and Doe Plantain. It's a little bit of a swing top. It just, I just love the way it fits. So again, I've used it over and over again. But I wanted that statement sleeve. And like I said, the Galena also came free in adults. So I simply printed off that sleeve, put it on the Deer and Doe top, and voila, I have a Bishop top that's super soft and fun to wear. Okay, but imagine you're putting on a jacket, a cardigan, a sweater, whatever, and you've got that volume of the Bishop sleeve and you've got your old jackets that all have non-statement sleeves and there's just not enough room for that sleeve to go in. Hold that thought. So in the meantime, I've been wanting to remake this cardigan called the Helene. It is by Jolly, that pattern company that's out of Quebec. It's a mother-daughter team and the mother opened the business in 1983 and boy, she is a talented girl, <laughs> lady. Um, she just started this kind of out of necessity. And if you might know that 1983 is when knits were really coming into their own, but not everyone knew how to really sew them correctly, quite honestly. And they were sewing the knits like they had been taught to sew the wovens and there's some problems with that. So she really just got on it. And then the next thing she knows, she was making uh, skating outfits and uh, what I would call athletic uh, kind of technical outfits. And so, she, you know, as you can see, this lady has got a really good foundation on how to make knit clothes that fit well for an athletic body, which I don't really have anymore. So the first one I made, I made in the Ponte. It only had 40% stretch. It looked great, didn't feel great, just didn't have enough stretch. Um, and I've since given away. But So I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's just how I pronounce it in my head. So just it's, I call it the Helene, so I could be wrong. But here are some line drawings. The top ones are the inside of the garment. But as you can see, there's a, a line that just goes through the whole thing. That's just, I find really nice detail. So it has a slight skirt in the back. Um, within this line, there is an integrated pocket, which you can kind of see how that's developed. The only thing I don't like about this pocket, it's a little bit back towards your hips rather than being in front, but no big deal. Um, a modification I made for myself was that it's a shawl collar, which I think is super fun, but there's something funny about my neck. 
that it's kind of a short neck. And so I just trimmed a little bit of that off and brought the neck down so it's a little shorter in the back. I also cut it and added seam allowance because I wanted to sew that and press it open so that I could top stitch it. Because since it's online, the inside of the jacket is exposed and um, I just didn't like the way that serged edge would look. The last thing I did is I attempted to cover this raw seam that's also serged. Um, I haven't done that very much, so I'm just somewhat happy with my result. But the funny thing is, is I actually have an athletic fabric that is dead on the color that I used for the Helene. And why I'm talking about fabric, well, let me um, go a little bit into detail with that. So I call it a raisin color. It's darker than what I have on, but quite honestly, a lot of people would just call it brown. But to me, it has a little bit of a red hue to it. And it is an unusual fabric. I got it from Joanne and it's in their athleisure section. But you know how many things are made of polyester? Um, it's not, it's made of nylon. And it's 88% nylon, 12% um, spandex. And it has quite a give to it. Here's a cast off piece. I love this fabric so much. <laughs> I ended up making three things. I made a hoodie for my husband and the two Helene's that I'm, I, I'm focusing on today. But it's really interesting. It does retail for $25 a yard, so it's not you know, an inexpensive fabric, but of course, you gotta play the game at Joanne, right? <laughs> Before Wordle, there was the Joanne game. <laughs> you know, get the coupons. 20% off if you pick it up, you know, whatever. Anyway, um, I really recommend that fabric, and I'm not the biggest Joanne fan, but every once in a while there's a unicorn. That's a good fabric, and that's one of them. So um, back to the details of the Helene. So let me show you mine. Okay, so here's the neck I was telling you about. Um, I wanted to top stitch it like that, so that's why I cut that neck or added seam allowance, I guess you could say. Um, and this is the detailing I was trying to cover. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's get on to the fun part, the alteration I made. So I was telling you I wanted to have enough volume to get over a bishop sleeve. So I created what I call an architectural detail. So I did some math and I figured out that three of these with seam allowance will fit on the end of this particular sleeve. This is the child's one. The Helene also, all of their patterns at Jally come from child through adult. So, and you just get them. So it's included in the price. So I sewed three of these together and then sewed it to the bottom of this. And then that created and as you can see, I also opened up the sleeve first so that it wasn't hugging because like I said, it's kind of an athletic fit. So it, it kind of hugs your lower arm normally, but I opened it up and then brought in the um, sleeve. So to kind of make an architectural bishop sleeve. Now, why couldn't I just do a normal bishop sleeve? Of course I could, but I wanted to try this. I just thought it would be kind of fun. So I'm pretty happy with the results. Um, I think that my granddaughters turned out to have a little bit more shape than mine. Um, and by now you've seen pictures of us. We did get one photo shoot in our matching outfits. As you can see, mine doesn't seem to go out quite as much, but it still does accommodate the bishop sleeve. And, um, and I'm happy with it overall. So there you have it. I had three patterns, the Galena, the Helene, and the Plantain. And I had two girls, me and my granddaughter, and I had four different things, two tops and then two cardigans. So that makes four. Um, I did want to say one more thing about the Little Lizard King and their other business called Styla. When I was looking them up to prepare for this video, 
they have another free pattern called the Laurel. It's every bit as cute as the Galena. And quite honestly, I think their cutest patterns are the cheap, are the free ones, like <laughs> no lose. So um, I recommend that you look them up. Okay, um, have I missed anything? No, okay. So let's just talk about what I have on. Well, I'll tell you, I have on a ready wear top. And this top has been in the donation pile probably three times. And the history behind this top is I was actually on vacation. Uh, we got the opportunity to take a really long vacation. So the seasons kind of changed and I went from summer to fall and I needed some long sleeve. And I also knew I wanted this color and I also knew I wanted to experiment with the square necks. So when I saw this in the Gap in literally Croatia, <laughs> there was a big you know, mall that had the Gap and H&M and the stores that we're familiar with. And, um, and I bought it and I paid more than I normally do for things, but you know, um, I knew it was everything I wanted. I wanted the gathering, I wanted the square, I wanted the color. And um, so I started to wear it. And the one part of my body that is small is from like here to here, you know? And um, so it gaped and you know, you try wearing it, it just, like I said, I was frustrated with it. I put in the donation pile. I even considered selling it since it was a brand new, you know, hadn't even been out probably in the U.S. yet when I brought it home. And um, and then I just thought, what if I try to put elastic in it? And I did, and isn't it a good result? So I'm one of those weird people that do not mind unpicking things. I get real into the tediousness of things. So I just really relaxed. I unsewed the corners and put in, um, it's not a very strong elastic. It's like, um, anyway, it's a real weak elastic because, you know, I don't want it to be too stiff or anything. So it's soft, that's the word I'm looking for. So yeah, I put that in and I saved the top. And, you know, I just wanted to encourage you that, you know, with our sewing skills, they translate over into a lot of other things not only in your wardrobe, but in your home and in your lifestyle. And I would really like to share some of those things as we go along as an encouragement that, you know, this isn't um, just a hobby. I mean, although it is, of course, um, but we can share it in so many different ways. Okay, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'll turn around so you can see the back. Okay, here I go. <laughs> Had to look. <laughs> well, I think I'll wrap that up. Oh, I guess I should say the pants I'm wearing, um, they are something I found on Etsy, a $5 pattern by um, a little company called Allwell. I have never heard of anyone wearing these pants. Uh, they're just a knit pattern. I mean, I'm sorry, a woven pattern. Um, what drew me to them is the big pockets. I just you know, is I love that look of um, the pockets in the front and the back. And so I ended up making quite a few pairs of these because last year was my year of learning how to fit pants. So it ended up being a pattern that I just really did kind of unlearning on. Um, it's elastic waisted. So I still am not an expert at actually having a fixed waist with a fly and zipper, but I got, pretty good um, at being happy with these. And um, maybe we'll go over pants someday too. But anyway, have a great day. And it was just fabulous talking to you. And I look forward to seeing you soon.